Abbott, who has been on the show before. We actually had her, we did a studio tour in her studio, which I linked that in the description. So if you missed that, you have got to check it out. It's amazing. Anyways, Alice, welcome to the show. And why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. Hi. Thank you for inviting me. Um, so yes, I, uh, oh gosh, where do I start? Um, when I first retired, I guess I was looking for things to do, things that, you know, to become involved in. And I actually went on a, you know, a studio tour, um, up near Bancroft in that okay. area. And I went into, um, you know, one of the places on the tour and there was a woman who had rug, rug hooking things out. And I was so, so taken by it. I was just super excited. And I talked to her about it. And, and, um, and at that point, I had just retired. So I had time and I was like, I want to try this. And um, I found a local place nearby where she had rug hooking supplies, which is very lucky because there's not that many of them around. Um, and yeah, so I, I started getting into rug hooking. And um, so the piece that's right here on the chair behind me is, um, this is the very oh, first that I did. I um, went into um, the store um, and I just started picking out colors I liked. And I picked, um, the backing is a linen backing. And um, I went home and I just started doing this. I really wow. had no idea what I was doing. And I made up the design myself. I didn't even know that you could buy printed designs. Um, <laughs> Hook I got, I'll show you. There's so many different hooks, but I got this itty bitty. Um, anybody who's done rug hooking before, they know that this is a beginner uh, type of hook. And so I used this little itty bitty hook. And for this um, rug, I did um, every single one of these pieces I cut by hand. So oh, I was cutting scissors and cutting the material, like cutting, it's all wool. And um, so, that, so that was my first piece. And um, then I, I joined um, a local group in Campbellford. It's a wonderful group, lovely ladies. And um, they um, have a cutter there. So I actually, I didn't even know there was such a thing as a cutter. Um, <laughs> yeah, how to use the cutter. And I learned about the different size of cuts so that you can have um, a three is a very fine cut. Um, you can have, um, and actually I brought some wool to show you. So. Um, so this is um, just the plain wool that you would start with. This is undyed natural wool. And um, so you can use this and uh, over dye it any color you want. Um, you can buy uh, wool. You can, it's harder now to get wool at um, like thrift stores and that kind of place because there aren't that many things anymore that are made out of 100% wool. But this is um, a, a bought piece that I had. And these are some of the strips then that were cut from that. And this is a three cut. So that's quite fine, uh, quite thin. And um, I'm not, some people do a lot of hooking with three cut. It's quite fine. And um, I like a bigger cut. So, um, but um, you can buy... Um, this is called a texture, so it's already got, it's a gray plaid instead of just being plain. And then I showed, here's a piece of that that I over dyed yesterday. So you can see it's oh, the nice. same. You can see it's the same thing, but I did an over dye with that. Um, and you can do spot dyes like this. So they make really cool backgrounds when you hook them. And so I'll show you another piece then. This is too big to get in the whole um, thing, but this is a, a carpet that's in my kitchen on our kitchen floor. And I'm dying of this. So this was all um, this natural uh, door. I get this wool from door mills, which is in the States. So this is all the natural. And uh, I did all the dyeing for this. I had to do a lot of uh, sort of practice of, of colors before I found what I wanted. And um, I, I call this an original, but it's just a, a woven kind of look. Yeah. Um, kind of that look of uh, uh, those old fashioned um, lawn chairs we used to sit on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it looks like. You're right. <laughs> and then I put in the kind of random um, yellow and, and blue kind of dots here and there, just so it wasn't just as plain. 
So that one's in a kitchen. So then those were, I've done quite a few that are floor rugs. Um, and then I kind of stepped, uh, took another step forward and I started taking some classes. So when I joined um, in Camelford, there was a woman, her name's Janice Daniels, and she is a rug hooking teacher which the, with the um, OHCG. So that's the Ontario Hand, uh, Ontario Hookers Craft Guild, I think it's called. Okay. And, um, she um, is, so they have a whole group of teachers there and she was in our guild and she would do um, lessons or, or um, group um, kind of teaching different methods rather than just doing hooking. So um, one uh, class I did, um, this was called um, um, Hooking Like the Group of Seven. Yeah, so um, this one, I think I showed you this one when you came last time. I think you did, um, yeah. Yeah, and this one, the thing I really like about this one is that in the, if I can just prop it here, in the um, rocks here, I did all the dyeing for that. Um, and the sky, I had a horrible time trying to get the dye just right, the colors just right for that, because I wanted that kind of effect in the sky. And um, so the, actually the teacher for this one is another person who names Carol Schuen. And um, I got the background from her. So she did the dyeing for that one. Uh -huh. And Schuen was the teacher for this particular piece. That's amazing. It kind of, um, Pat Lawson, I, hi Pat, I saw you're on here. Pat showed me some pieces last week that looked a little similar-ish to that. She did a lot of landscape. Yeah. There's a lot of group of seven ones out there because yeah. it's in the public domain now. So it's, you know, I mean, it's been for a while, but so, um, and just talking about the public domain, um, if you're going to do an author or an artist's work, you really should get their permission. And so this piece I'm going to show you, I'll get away in a minute. <laughs> um, this piece I'm going to show you is, um, a, um, it's, it was from an artist who's up in um, Wilno. Her name is Joyce Burkholder, and she does amazing, beautiful artwork. And I really like her stuff. I have some of the, her prints in my house. And so I contacted her and I asked her, and she said, and I told her this was not to sell um, I wasn't going to, uh, you know, make a profit on this. This was just for my own practice because I wanted to look at her work and see if I could do a good job replicating it. And um, again, I did all the dyeing in this for this picture. And um, she emailed back and said, yes, go ahead. And when you're done, I'd love to see um, a, a copy of it. So this is the piece. Yeah, if you I love it. So that I was that one. It was... Um, um, I, I just looked at her work and I, uh, you know, copied it. I had to draw it first. I had to draw it on the backing and then I had to pick the colors. And, and when I was finished, I did send her a picture of it and she was great. And she said um, that she was really impressed with it. And she said that I had permission to do any one of her pieces anytime I wanted. Oh, so nice. that, yeah, that was a really nice, uh, a nice compliment. For sure. And then I'm out. So this is another, um, it's a kind of a group of seven um, look. And this is a, um, it's called stained glass. So it's a stained glass effect. So that's why all the lines yeah. in between and the, all the connecting part. Oh, that's and so neat. I did a lot of the this and some of it that I bought so it wasn't all mine but right. that was another piece and so all of these framed pieces um I'm very lucky because I'll get back in the picture <laughs> um I'm very lucky because my husband does all the framing for me so um yeah when I have a piece that and I've got lots more but I can't just talk about me all night well I can but <laughs> uh, <laughs> But rug hooking all. So is there anything before I move on? Or do you want me to say anything else about rug hooking? You're right. Because just to tell everybody who's watching, Alice isn't just a rug hooker. She has all kinds of things we're going to talk about tonight. But I did want to just say hi to Pat. And oh, I see Brittany's out there. And Cecilia. Hi, guys. Thanks for showing up watching. They are all saying it's beautiful. I You can see the comments when they come up, right? Can you see them when they pop up? 
I've kind of been flitting around. So I have Okay. <laughs> so lots of comments just saying it's beautiful. That's lovely. What an amazing artist. Thank you. Thank you so much. And you know what? I have to say that I have a hard, hard time calling myself an artist. Um, even, <laughs> my, even calling my room upstairs, I hardly can say the word studio. <laughs> I call it my workshop because downstairs is my husband's workshop. So I call upstairs my workshop. Like I'm still kind of new to this. And I feel like um, I, I always feel like it's a little pretentious of me to call myself an artist. I'm, but I'm you are. I'm starting to feel that way just a little bit, but yeah, it's. <laughs> I've it's, been in your house. Your art is everywhere. <laughs> your own art that you made with your own hands. Like, it's amazing. I love it. It is fun. It, it makes me feel really good to have my things around me. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh, all okay. right. I'll go on with my story. Um, so when I was at rug hooking with all these lovely ladies, um, the, there was a group of women who were talking about their spinning and that they went to a spinning group. And I thought, oh, that's cool. I'd like to do that. And um, it, I actually had done spinning before. It wasn't a totally new thing for me because um, way back when I was in my 20s and it was in um, a summer of univer between uh, years of university, um, I, I did a, a summer job at like a pioneer village. And oh, so I had spin and I didn't actually spin very well, but I actually, you know, had the idea. Right. So, oh, and I, and I did knit, I did a lot of knitting already. So now listening to these women, I thought that sounds very cool. And just having like made the yarn that you're going to actually knit with and then do something with, I thought was kind of a cool idea. So I, I started out with, um, buying roving um so that's already if people don't know that's already processed mill processed wool um and i'm very lucky because again joining the guild you get to meet so many people who are wonderful and i know several women who are um shepherds have their own um you know sheep and um this is from um allison brown who has um a um um, a farm up near Norwood. Um, so this is 40% um, mohair and 60% wool. And so I started out with um, using roving. And so I bought that all ready to spin and spun up. So I will show you one of the first things. Um, so this, these are the colors. <laughs> um, um, my friend Grace Claire, who is another shepherd, she has amazing fiber, beautiful animals, lovely fiber. She names all of her sheep. And so when you buy wool from her, you know whose wool you're getting. That's so amazing. this was little Cheryl. Oh. And these, and so this was bought, all of these were bought as roving. So they are now hand spun and done in a two ply yarn. And so this is little Cheryl. And these colors, were um, from a fiber mill that is near Alora. It's called Wellington Fibers. So anybody who's into knit, spinning, um, that kind of thing, um, you will know, maybe have already heard of that. So these are all um, colors I got from her as roving, spun them up, and all of those became this. So oh, wow. <laughs> this. there we go. And um, yeah, so it's really fun to think that you're starting out with something that looks like um, something that looks like this, you right? Know, turns into this, which then becomes something you can wear. Um, this pattern is on Ravelry. Um, it's called Telia um, by um, Jennifer Steinglass. So it's a lovely pattern, and it's very comfy. I did. Um, the neck on it a little bit myself because I just wanted the neck to go up a little higher um, but it's a very cozy so from this I had some wool left over and I made this so the hat is a um, the Shetland Wool Week has um, a hat each year that they put out that's free the pattern is free so this was from last year so 2021 I believe and um, and then I had some of the colors left over and this one it's actually a little bit big for me it looks a little yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a bit big but i can wear it kind of you know push back 
Oh yeah, I like it like that. Um, so I decided with the leftover yarn I had, I would make another one. Oops, if I can get it. The ladies are pretty impressed that you know the name of the sheep and that you did that all yourself. <laughs> Brittany says life goals. <laughs> so I started this one. Oh, nice. Which is the same pattern. I'm still, it's on the needles. Yeah. And, but it's a little bit smaller, so it should be better. Beautiful. A little sip of water here. Sure. <clears throat> Alice is not feeling 100% for anybody watching, but she's doing great. <laughs> I just hope my voice holds out. <clears throat> yeah, I hope so too. So, so that was work, um, working with roving. And you so, spun all that yarn. So you, you spun the yarn, you knit the sweater. Yes. You did yeah. the whole thing. That's amazing. But, that's, but that was just the beginning. And I hadn't really gotten to my true passion yet. So <laughs> I into like the thing that just put me over the top. So instead of going buying the mill spun roving, right. um, I went right to the farm. I went right to the farm and I bought the fleece. So, buying... and didn't you tell me you were there on cheering day? Even like you were helping with the shearing. Yeah. Now I go every I go every spring and I help with the shearing and I get right in there and you get all dirty and mucky and stinky and it's wonderful. I just love it. <laughs> and now I bring home bags of you know the raw fleece that's all smelly and um i this is um this fleece that i've got right here in front of me is called um is from a sheep named lily oh. and lily got beautiful beautiful um, um locks. are they called locks yes thank you <laughs> beautiful locks you can tell a really nice fleece because first of all um the tips will not break off and it should have a nice ping. Like, can you hear that? Oh yeah. Can you? I can. Yeah. It has this little ping sound. And so if you put it up beside your ear, you can really hear that. And then the other thing is the waviness of it, that's called the crimp. So you want it to have a nice crimp. And this is a long staple. So the staple is how many inches it is from the tip to where it was shorn off. And so this is a nice long staple and uh, it's got a great crimp. And the other thing is, don't know if you'll be able to see it, but this has a lovely sheen as well. I so see. You see that. Luster. Yeah. It's got a beautiful luster. So this is a very, very lovely um, fleece. And so then I take, I take the locks and I use a, um, this is actually just a dog brush. I do have the real, it's called a flick carter. So I do have the real flick carter, but I just use this one and it, use, it works much better. And you just take the locks and brush them until they become this fluffy, almost see-through, um, airy piece. And then I put it through a drum carter. So some people do all the hand carding. I find that takes way too long and I just wanna get on with it. So I put it through the drum carter and it makes these great big lovely bats. So the bats, this one's all rolled up. So the bats come off the drum card are looking like this. Nice. And then I can take a piece of this and pull it off. And now I have a piece that looks just like the roving I showed you. And I've made this myself from the locks from Lily. And this will then <laughs> run up into whatever my next project is. So the, I'll show you um, this yarn um, is a lovely combination because our guild did a challenge where we were each given a bag of fiber. So my bag of fiber had some mohair in it, some alpaca, some blue face luster and some angora. So this, I took all of these fibers and I blended them together on my um, drum cutter. And then I took the, the yarn and spun it all. Then I dyed it. And from that, our challenge was to make something. So I made this little shawlette. If you can see Beautiful. it. Yep, I can see it's like a triangle. Yeah, and it's kind of, um, if I move back a little, 
it's just a short little um, shawlette. It doesn't go very far down. It's very cozy and soft and warm. You can have it right against your skin. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a lovely little one to have if you're just sitting and reading a book or if you're in bed, it's one of those nice little kind of bed shawl to wear. But the other thing I love about it is I also wear it like this. Oh, nice. It's a scarf. So it also becomes this kind of scarf you can wear, at the, you know, rolled around this way. Love and it. Also, um, a Ravelry pattern, a, a free one. I don't remember what it was called right now, but it's a, a cozy. But it's just that feeling that you started with um, a game, you know, starting from fiber, um, putting the fiber all together, coming up with um, the color you want, and then coming up with an idea. So it was lots of fun to do this project. So you dyed it yourself. Yeah. yeah. That's like a whole other thing we haven't really discussed either is that you... I mean, we've touched on it. You <laughs> so you do your own dyeing as well. Yes. I've been there. I've seen your dye studio. Yeah. I did. I got into dyeing because you can't always get the colors you want. Yeah. And if you go looking, you might find the color, but it might not be the fiber you want. Um, I've seen lots of things. I think, oh, it's a gorgeous color. And then you go look at it, and it's like some kind of an acrylic blend. And I just really love the natural fibers. So... Um, or sometimes it's cotton and you don't want cotton, you want wool. And so that's when I got into dyeing. Um, I think also for my rug hooking, sometimes you just need that right color and you can't find it. So yeah, I, I started dyeing things. Um, Brittany says your next step is to get a sheep, perhaps to get your own sheep. <laughs> and so Lee says it's like farm to table only for clothes. It's true. <laughs> oh, I'm glad someone said that because. Um, I wanted to tell you about um, one of the things I got involved in. And since COVID, of course, we haven't done it again. But a sheep to shawl. I've done many sheep to shawl activities now. And they're so wonderful. There's uh, one at the uh, Royal Winter Fair in Toronto. Yeah. Yep. And mm -hmm. always one in Kingston at the Sheepdog Trials um, in August. And so um, every year we've had a group that's gone. And you go with um, four spinners. Um, a, a person who's ply does the plying and a weaver. And so you have four hours to, and they, they basically throw a, a big pile of fleece and it's raw fleece. It's not cleaned. They throw a pile of it in front of your group and um, the, the clock goes and you've got four hours to spin this. And, um, and then the weaver weaves it into a shawl. So it's a, a sheep to shawl activity. And it's, it's really fun. If anyone out there is a spinner, um, I encourage you to try it. And if you're not, then, you know, just go and, and, and watch and see what it's like. It's very, the one in Kingston is lovely because it's right by the, um, um, I don't know what the water is, but it's outside in a park by the water. It's, and then the sheepdog trials are on at the same time. It's, so, the it's on the St. Lawrence, isn't it? There in Kingston? <laughs> Maybe, maybe not. I think it's where the, it's somewhere on a creek by the lake. Like it's oh, kind I of see. lake. I don't think it's on, um, but yeah, it's, um, it's, it's a lovely, um, lovely day though. So if people are interested, that's a fun activity. Okay. I have one more thing that I'm going to share. Um, the very first, one more thing about spinning. <laughs> one more spinning thing. Yeah. So the very first, um, um, sheep that I, or sheep um, fleece that I bought. Uh, her name was Esther. And because I didn't really know much about buying um, fleece then and how much I would need, this was a very big fleece. It was an eight pound fleece. And I just kept uh, working at it and working at it. And I had so many bats of this and I kept putting the bats away into um, like big tubs, like big um, Tupperware type of tubs. And I kept making things and making things and thought I was done with Esther. And all of a sudden, one day I opened a tub and I always threw a, um, uh, like a little tag in so I would know. And I opened a tub and here was a whole bunch more of these back <laughs> Esther. And I thought, this is like an ever end, like never ending supply. And so <laughs> I don't know if you can see, but it's, it's got a lot of gray in it. And so when you, um, when I spun it by itself, 
it had almost a, a, a dull look or a dirty look because of the gray fiber that's in it. So I, t I took it and I dyed it and I wanted mm. a bit of kind of a turquoisey tealy look. And this was nice, but it wasn't dark enough. I wanted something even darker. So, and I don't have, I used every last bit of it, but I made it into this little cardi. <clears throat> I'll just put it on. And it's just a short little um, cardigan. <clears throat> I made it for me as I make so many things for other people and I don't get to, you know, so it's, it's just short. It has no, um, buttons are closed closed like you can put a pin on it if you wanted to close it up but i just like the way it just hangs it's just a nice and short comfy yeah, so nice and i just love the the color was just what i wanted this deeper um this is what i got when i first dyed oh, i thought yeah. it was way too light i wanted some i actually dyed this three times before i got the rich color that i've got so um yeah so this was um, sort of the last thing that I've done with Esther, I thought, and that I still have. <laughs> I'll be work I'll be working through some more um, bats of Esther in in the, the future. <laughs> so my spinning days um, led me then to weaving because a lot of the the guilds that you um, I belong to two different weavers and spinners guild. So within, within the guild, there are both spinners and weavers. And I really thought with my rug hooking, my spinning, my knitting, I had enough. I didn't really need another. Um, and, and then somewhere in there, someone asked me if I wanted to come to their quilting group. And I said, like, no, I, I have to draw the line somewhere. And I actually don't like sewing. I'm not a sewer at all. I love all these other things, but that's not my thing. So um, when someone said to me, you know, would you want to, you know, weave? And I was like, no, I'm not going to go there. Well, um, yeah, a, a loom came up for sale. I think I told you this story already. So um, I'll just go on to say that. Yes, I did get the, into weaving. And now it's actually right up there with that passion of starting with that fleece from the from the very beginning. And I can use my hand spun in my weaving as well. And my weaving can go on and on. I mean, I could, I could have had just a whole talk just about that. So I will go straight to, I guess I'll go straight to the thing I like best, which I really love to do blankets. Blankets are my favorite. Um, I do tea towels. I do scarves. Um, I've done rugs for the floor, like woven rugs for the floor. Um, I've done placemats, I've done table runners. So I've done a wide variety of things, <clears throat> but I always go back to blankets. The blankets are my favorite. So um, the thing about <clears throat> that I like when I'm, I'm uh, weaving blankets is that I'll, I'll try one <clears throat> and then instead of just putting enough on for um, like several blankets, you can use one warp. Well, instead of doing that, I will tie on to that warp a new warp so it kind of sets it up the same way. It's all ready to go, but I can use a whole different warp and a different weft, but I will pass it through the same heddles. So you'll right. have to tie up in the same um, threading, but it's, it just happens a bit easier. So it's gonna be hard to show these because they're so big. Um, this is a, um, a a twill block weave. Um, it's from a hand woven, an old hand woven. I think it's a hand woven from like 1988. Um, mm -hmm. The um, warp is a green wool. It actually, actually it was a, a, a natural wool and I dyed it this green color. Okay. And the uh, weft going through it is actually um, Noro wool. Do you know the Nor do you know Noro wool? I don't. It's a Japanese wool that's very, it's a variegated wool. It's very, very soft and cozy, and it has um, lots of um, color in it. So you can see it goes anywhere from pinks to oranges to turquoises, and um, it just kind of goes right through. And the thing about the block twill is it's the opposite on the other side. So the, fa the fact that the screen is small 
can't see. It's but, hard, yeah. But it's, it's just a very soft and cozy blanket. But so now I'll show you this exact same blanket, same pattern, but tied on with a different warp and using a different weft. Okay, and Pat is asking what, um, what do you use for warp with your, oh, sorry, she's saying with your rug weaving. That was a little off, I guess. Okay. She said, what do you use for warp when rug weaving? Okay, so. Sorry. Um, yes, I, I know what she means. So I have, there is something called rug warp and um, I, I, the, the, um, the rug warp that I had for the rug weaving I did um, was given to me and it didn't have a label or anything on it. Um, it's one of the things about belonging to a guild is that people are very generous yeah. and they, they pass things on to you and lots of times things don't have labels. Mm -hmm. Um, but I did, so th with the rugs I did, I actually, I can show you one. <laughs> it's right here behind me. So this one, um, if I bring it close, you might see the pattern better. Um, the, oh, um, the warp in this is just a doubled, um, it's a wool, it's a single, I don't know if you can see it. It's a, it's a single and it's a wool and that, but I doubled it. So um, this whole rug wool, both the warp and the weft, and it worked fine. Um, I'm very good. I'm very, um, I'm not afraid to experiment or try things. I know that sometimes rugs aren't made just of wool and they aren't made with the wart being singles, but, yeah, exactly. but, um, it worked fine. And the, um, and like I said, I doubled it. So, um, but in the pattern, you can see that, uh, the warp actually looks quite nice in it. It does. And, yeah, definitely. So that. I hope that answers the question, but I did use um, rug warp for the rugs I made that are in my bathroom, the mats that are in the bathroom. So <clears throat> I was just showing you this green one. Yes, beautiful, right. Um, this is oh wow, the exact same blanket. And in this one, you can see the twill blocks better because the colors are more distinct. Right. And there's a lot of... Um, um hand spun in this as well and so in this one if i turn it flip it over you can see the i don't know if you can actually um but it's the opposite so where you see the white here on it's, this side oops it is the colored side nice and so it's the exact same blanket but it's got um a totally different color scheme and it really makes the um, the whole blanket looks like it's a different, a different thing. Yeah, it does for sure. It's beautiful. So um, do you, do you do, do you do those as double weave or you just have a wide loom? I can't remember. That is, I have a 60 inch loom and both of those are done on the full. I will show you actually the next two I'm going to show you are double weave, but these two were on a 60 inch loom using the full width of the loom. And I'll tell you that was I am not a big person. I am not very tall and I don't have a great arm span. I did most of those standing up because wow. I couldn't sit and, <sighs> and I was kind of rocking and um, I found standing up made it easier to, to get that reach and yeah. it was exhausting. It was pretty tiring. I can but, imagine. So then I went to the double weave. You need a fly shuttle. Yes, I have. I have thought about that and um, yeah, that might be coming up next. <laughs> it might be. Um, so this one, and these are both um, double width, double uh, weaving. And what I did was with double width, I find by putting a, a vertical line in yeah. here, um, it really, really hides your center line. Yeah, so that's brilliant. A um, double width weaving that has um, a very um, smooth or plain surface, that that line where it's folded uh, is more noticeable. But mm -hmm. when you have that 
um, vertical line running along and one of those vertical lines is your fold, it's very, very hard to see after. And um, I think that if you were a weaver, you could look at this closely and you could find that. But if you are not a weaver, you would never know. You wouldn't and even know to look for one. You wouldn't even know there might be one there, right? Like, No, that's right. So this one um, is the one I did first, and it actually matches the couch in our den. So that's where, and I, I don't know if these look very worn, but all these blankets are quite well loved because um, the blankets that I have made for other people are gone, and the ones we have around the house get used a lot. So um, this one matches the, the couch in our den. And then I did another one, again, just tied this one on, and it's a very different look. The couch downstairs is blue. I've got a lot of blue and gray. And so this one is all done in blues and grays. Love but it. same pattern, just totally different warp and weft. I love it. It's fabulous. Um, there were a couple comments. Pat had asked about linen on rugs, but then she said... You answered and you inspire, and she's encouraged that you've used wool for a rug warp. She would have thought that would be difficult. And Cecilia said she don't think she doesn't think she can have hand woven rugs in her house till her kids are much older. She'd be terrified that they would get ruined. That makes sense. Oh, 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 no, no, no. You know what? I, <laughs> I decided that everything you make is to be used. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> The rung, one rug I have is in our kitchen, right under the, at the kitchen sink. And when I first made it, everyone said, oh, you're not putting that in your kitchen, are you? And I said, yes, it's to be used. It's to be loved and worn and worn out. And I'll make another one if I have to. And You're the, prolific. One, you're very prolific with your work. <laughs> the one that I showed you, this one, this is in our mud. This is in the mudroom where people walk <laughs> with their boots on. I mean. Wow. Oh I, oh, I wish I brought, anyway, I, I actually did a sample of this one. So this is the one that is in there now. And um, I kind of want this, um, all these crazy colors too, is because I have a lot of artwork on the walls in there and all these colors pick that up. So there's reds and blues and greens on the wall, you know, in pieces that are there. Um, so that's why it's so colorful. But I was thinking of um, making one more in, um, sort of turquoisey blues um, for the summer, just to trade them out. And yeah. I did a little sample, but I forgot to bring the sample to show you. So, but but yeah, I I think why not try, right? And if it wears out, then make another one. It's it's kind of fun. Um, so I have one more one more blanket to show. Okay. This one was a lot of fun. Because, um, first of all, I made it, I think I said to you that I was doing the, um, I'm doing the OHS uh, weaving study program. That's and right. yeah. in, um, I'm just about to start unit five. So in unit one, we used a lot of very bright, we had to do the color wheel. And so we had to have all the colors of the color wheel, used a lot of very bright primary kind of colors. And so I had some of these left over and I didn't know what I was going to do with them. I also had a great big cone of um, a, a black boucle and mm -hmm. I thought, okay, let's have some fun with this. And I found a pattern and I don't know if you can see this very well, but this is the one side and it's got, can you see those colors? Or not? I can. Oh yeah, no, I love it. Yep. This is the one side. And it's very muted and the colors are just barely there. But look what happens when you open it up. Oh, wow. <gasps> side is it's really, fantastic. really, really fun. Bright, amazing. So I kind of try and fold them and have you can see the muted side is on one side. And then that really bright, fun. It's kind of like this big reveal. So it's like... <laughs> the dark side and go to and that that's woven yeah this is i get confused it's like did you knit that i can't i can't see yeah. the detail that well yeah this oh yeah oh it's this the boucle that's throwing me off because it gives that texture yes the boucle is very cozy and fluffy and it's just um it's kind of like a lap blanket 
it's very nice for sitting in and watching television mm. or, um, you know, um, reading a book. Um, if you're sitting outside, it, you know, on like a fall day, it's really, really cozy and warm. So yeah. it was a lot of fun and just got to use up all those bright colors I had hanging around um, that I didn't really know what I was going to do with. So, um, yeah, so that's my blanket adventure. I love it. Um, and you make it sound like as if you use up all your yarn, which I know you have a nice yarn collection. I I do. I try to look around. It's funny because as I'm working on something, I'm sure everyone's like this. While I'm actually weaving, my, my mind kind of looks around and I see colors and I see yarn sitting there. And all of a sudden, the next project starts to kick in my head. Like, oh, I could use that. And oh, what can I use with it? And and you start, and then I stop weaving and I get up and I start putting cones together and have them all lined up. And um, yeah, yeah, the next project is there and, and ready to roll before I finish the one I'm working on. I have to have um, headphones on and listen to an audio book or I just can't focus. Like I keep getting up from my weaving. I can't sit on my bench. I always say I have to have an uh, an, uh, an audio book in my ears to keep my bum on the bench or else I get distracted too easily. Yes, I do that too. I do that all the time. Um, and yeah, it's easy to get distracted because once you've kind of set up the pattern and set up the, the plan, just sitting and doing the weaving is the, you know, kind boring of boring part. It's the boring part. <laughs> yeah. It's the most exciting part is like that fur little bit. And then after that, it's like, meh, yes. I'll get through this. I'll get it done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So you've got, um, rug hooking, spinning, well, and, and it, spinning isn't just spinning either, right? It's like, what do you call that? In the loom, you would call it like dressing the loom. But when you're spinning, you like, when you're doing the drum carding and, and the combing. And, or, or like just processing the fiber. Processing so, the fiber. Processing of the fiber and then sitting down to spin. Yeah. The thing about That's spinning, fun. you can do it anywhere. Like I take it with me when I go to a friend's house because you can sit and talk while you're spinning and you can sit and watch television while you're spinning. You know, it's very, um, very, very relaxing. Um, it, it doesn't really take up your mind. It's like you can, I have friends who say they fall asleep while they're spinning. That's never happened to me, but they find it so relaxing. They can just fall asleep. So, wow. but um, yeah. And to me, spinning is kind of that in between thing. It's kind of almost like, um, I spin because I have a project in mind. Like I, I don't spin because like you can take a whole OHS spinning course and you can learn all about the right number, like the right type of twist. And you could learn how to spin all different fibers and, you know, spinning cotton is a very challenging thing. It's not an easy thing to do. Um, so you can, yeah, you can take a whole course on this, but and the whole program is quite long. It's years and years long yeah. to become a master spinner. Spinning is just, I just want to do it so I can, I want to make so um yeah it, it's not uh the spinning itself has not drawn me in right and then the dyeing so that's like four four fiber art I I, I consider dyeing a fiber art I guess it, it's not necessary I think it is I couldn't I think dyeing is a fiber art even yeah. though you have to be dyeing fiber you don't I guess it doesn't have to be fiber but it usually is right Yes, fiber yeah. or fabric. Do you ever dye anything after it's woven? Have you tried that? No, I have done. I have dyed things after I have knit knit them. Um, it is harder because you, it's harder to get the um, dye to be even. Um, yeah. You know, to have a nice uniform color because the bigger the piece is, the bigger the amount of liquid you need, so it has room to move. Um, so yeah, usually I dye things when it's still just in like in a skein like this. Um, oh. That's the dye. But and then I have dyed the locks before. You can dye. <clears throat> um, I can actually show you some here. <clears throat> so these are dyed locks um, that I have. Um, you know, so it's still in the lock form, right. just, like, just like these were. Um, 
but um, they've been in a like a spot die, so they've had um, they've been in a like a a pan, and then you put the um, and then you kind of spot the die all over, and yep. and actually I made some. I was going to show you something I made with these. So <clears throat> I'm just going to get my jar out of the way. So this is this is kind of um, a funny little. Um, shoulder or a uh, shoulder cowl I think it's called and this was done with spot dies so it has little am I getting it right I think has little shoulder seam and then it just does mm -hmm. a little whole thing and then <clears throat> it's just like this size and it fits just like that nice it's kind of a funky little cute uh, and it's got a bit of a, a braided, and not braid, but a twisted uh, knitted edge here. And that was done with these dyed locks. Oh, neat. All of these dyed locks then get, these were <clears throat> a little bit darker than what I did here. And so these didn't get in. <laughs> gotcha. Um, but they were, but then these would all be carded. And, um, and I actually spun these from the locks. I did not oh. put them that I just spun them right from the lock so you just pull them out and start spinning and uh and then I made enough yarn to do this little shoulder cowl so Fun. and it's very comfy something you can just wear um you know on a on a day when you just want something warm around your neck and keep your shoulders warm and <laughs> that size and so all those colors are from these crazy locks that's fun I know I've tried um roving before and then I've spun it in different ways. I've done fractal, fractal yes. spinning with yes. it. That was I did that a long time ago now. Forgot, but that was fun. Um, your shoulder shawl is lovely. I couldn't I I like my arms are always cold. Like I took my sweater off just before we did this because it was quite warm in my room and I didn't want to get anyways. I almost never you should never see my arms because I'm always cold. <laughs> <laughs> wear a lot of sweaters but then I just want something you know I love the little <clears throat> um the little small shawlette I showed you but yeah. this one it's really quite long but you just kind yeah. of turn around and then just I love that. and you're it's kind of a bit funky but it's got these little I like the little um uh oh. it's got shoulder seams on the front and the back so it kind of keeps it right where it should oh, be I on like that yeah it's mm -hmm. like the start of a sleeve yeah sure. Yeah. And yeah. Neil says he loves it. It's too hot. I take it off. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I, I kind of rushed because I didn't know, I didn't want to spend too much time on any one thing. But if you want me to go back over anything, I can. But I think I've shown you what I brought out for today. Okay. Do we answer everybody? If you're out there, do we answer all your questions? If you, if we didn't type them out and we'll get to them there's a little bit of a delay so that they're they won't hear this for a few seconds after till out you know what I mean like you and I are live together at the same time they're a little bit delayed so okay. I'll give it a minute and see and um we don't get any questions we can wrap it up I see you have a wall hanging behind you did you do that yes that's part of the um OHS um unit three is a um a hand, hand manipulated lace and so this was, um, oops. this was the final project. So each um, unit has a final project you have to do. And this whole unit is done in linen and cotton. <clears throat> and so this piece, um, you have to kind of explain what your piece is about when you send it in to be marked. And this one has... Um, Let's see, this is called Lino Lace, and this mm -hmm. is, um, mm, um, goodness, can I remember, um, Medallion Lace, and this, I can't remember this middle one. Anyway, the different, um, you had to use so many different uh, lace weaves in your piece, and then I used the light blue um, in it to show, um, kind of to represent the flax flowers because linen is made from flax and flax has a very pale blue flax flower. 
And then I have also in this middle part, which you probably can't notice, um, has a, um, a slub cotton in it. And um, I think that was all that I can tell you about this piece. But um, it was supposed to um, sort of incorporate all the ideas of the whole unit. So it has, it's made with linen. Um, the blue is to represent the blue of the flax flowers. It has several of the manipulated lace um, weave te techniques in it. And it's made with both cotton and linen. Nice. Lovely. Um, Pat did ask, who designed the cowl, please? Do you remember? Oh, it's a free Ravelry um, pattern. Um, I don't remember the like the name of the designer but if you just go on and say shoulder cowl um it comes up it's it's pretty simple um on ravelry so it, and it's a free pattern it's been okay. there okay great and um Brittany Attic Anatomy is asking how long do your framed pieces take you to make so I guess Brittany's talking about rug hooking there yes rug hooking is slow it's not a it's not a, a fast um and so I you know what Hours, hours and hours. <laughs> I can't uh, put a time on it. Um, when I'm really into it, I can get a lot accomplished. And other times, you know, I'll, I'll walk by and work on it a little bit and keep going. And so it just depends. Um, it depends if you're dyeing your own fabric for it, right? Yeah. The um, one I showed you that's the uh, looks like the group of seven one. Um, mm -hmm. The background of that for the sky, it took me forever to get in my mind what I wanted that sky to look like. I didn't want it to be plain. I didn't want it to be dark because the bottom is dark. And I kept trying things. You wouldn't believe how many times I hooked a whole area and pulled it all out. So until I found the right thing, that took a long time. I think that sat for like a good long year before I found just the wow. piece, just the colors I wanted. And then, and then once I found it, boom, I was done in no time. So oh, wow. husband is very good about uh, getting them um, framed and, and, and on the wall for me too. So I'm lucky for that. Your husband's very supportive, isn't he? Yes, he's great. He's great. <laughs> I, I didn't meet him when I was there, but I felt like I did. I mean, his hands were in every aspect of what you do, right? You know, it's so wonderful because both he and, and, um, our son, both of them are very, um, um, very, very capable men. And I know what they can do, basically. And so when I look around and I think, oh, they could do that. And I just ask them. And I'm very lucky because I never need a list. It gets done like, you know, instantly. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So, that's great. Yeah. All right. Well, I think we should wrap it up. Thank you so much for your time, Alice. Again, this is the second time you've been on the cha the channel. I love it. If you, if anybody watching has not seen the studio tour, you have got to check it out. It's again, it's in the link in the description below. Check that out. Her studio is amazing. And thank you so much for coming on again. And maybe we'll have you another time. Who knows? This has been great. Yes. I well Thank you very much for having me and thank you for listening to me and and letting me share my stuff it's very fun to do because not everybody wants to know this but oh it's well wonderful. that's what we're all about thank you it's so much okay bye for now bye-bye and i'll figure out how to end this